Hold on, y'all. Give me just a second to pull up my chat, my chat feed. Hey, okay. I see some people getting on now. Can y'all hear me? Before I get started, y'all comment and let me know that you can hear me. I'm sorry. Y'all know I can't never be on time. I had to get a shower, though. I've been, uh, I've been in the, the bed most of the day editing video. Okay, good. So everybody can hear me. All right. Okay. So first things first, y'all, if you hear a bell in the background, just know that I need to go check on my husband. Um, if y'all hear violent coughing in the background, my husband's fighting a sinus infection. It's been really hard on him. So um, if you hear something in the background, that's it. Also, if you hear the bell, I got to go. I need to go check on him um, if he rings me. So, I've got about 45 minutes. I'm going to try to open this up on my phone too so that I can see comments. Let me see here. Let me get all adjusted. Okay. All right, I should be able to keep up with comments this way. Okay, so I'm going to make my way through the thread from questions that were posted earlier. But the, what I wanted to start with, one of the main reasons why I decided to do the live was let's discuss the, the real FUPA, the mons pubis, um, the little pad of fat on top of the tootie. So a couple things like coming into the conversation on that that I just want to address real quick is um, our machines 40k cavitate 40k cavitation 30 to 30k cavitation I've posted studies in the group actual medical studies let's just go ahead I know we've got some new people in the group we got some new people coming on that are fresh out of training I'm not sure where you may have taken training um, I'm not sure maybe some of the things that you might have been told in your training anybody that follows me on youtube you guys know that um the whole cavitation and organ thing like throw that out the window there's so many medical studies that have completely debunked that and there's no literature written anywhere that says anything about cavitation being harmful to organs so um i noticed that there were some people that were feel like fearful of treating the mons pubis but I just want for you guys to think about something for a second, okay? So we do cavitation on the on the lower stomach. So we're working directly over the the uterus, the ovaries, um, all of that. Um, and not only that, we already know that there there are medical studies that are published. I've posted them in the group. You can probably search for them by just using the word study. Um, so I've published uh, studies in the group that are published on Mayo Clinic, several other places that references our exact machine strength. Um, they've done in-depth studies uh, showing that these machines are completely safe. The only thing that they affect, you know, is uh, your fat cells. So it, it, it's not possible to do organ damage with these machines, you guys. I don't, I don't know where, where that even got started, but I, I promise you there's no single piece of medical literature anywhere to back that up. So with that said, let's get that out of the way. Um, working on the mons pubis. Don't be afraid to work on the mons pubis. If there's fat there, it's okay, guys. We're just making it weird because it's a 2D. It's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. I want you guys to think about um, vaginal rejuvenation. How do we do that? We shove a radio frequency wand into the 2D and it heats it up hot enough to where it produces collagen to make it tight. So. Um, let's, let's get out of the, the thing of thinking that, um, 
you know, that's dangerous or being afraid, if you, it, it is going to be totally up to you. If you want, some people aren't comfortable treating that. It's too personal. Um, but for the, the people that it, it's not a comfort issue, if this is something that your client requests, don't overthink it. This is, this is body fat, just like anywhere else on the body. You're going to work that little area. Um, hold on, it says going in and out. Damn it. I just went through that whole explanation. The reception, if the video keeps getting interrupted, low volume. Hold on. I'm fixing to go out and come back in, okay? Okay, now wait a minute. Before I restart the live, show of hands, who is having issues with my with my volume or my um, the overall feed? I'm watching the comments right now, so who all's having issues? Hey guys, we've got a lot of people saying that they can hear it fine. So that lets me know that the issue may not be on my end. For everybody that may be having an issue, leave the live and come back in and see if that helps because I have some people that are saying they can hear me, they can hear me just fine. Oh, the volume is fine, the, the video keeps going in and out lost connection it's okay on my end it's, okay it's better now okay all right so basically what I was talking about is treating the mons pubis it's totally okay to treat the mons pubis y'all don't ever think that I mean if you're not comfortable with with touching a, a female area but um, you're you're not gonna hurt anything you're not gonna hurt anything this is this has been studied time and time again our our cavitations don't want to hurt the or organs guys um, and somebody that tells you that is not going to be able to to present you with with anything that disputes what has been like medical studies that have been published on this like there there's no actual um, credible legitimate piece of information published anywhere that that shows that cavitation can be harmful to organs however there are publications that say the exact opposite that um, specifically address this issue. So for anybody that missed it, that's what I was saying. I posted it in the group. Don't overthink the mons pubis treatment. You're going to treat it just the same way as you treat the other areas of the body. I mean, you can't use the vacuum on it because the, the vacuum handle is too big. You can use one of the small little tiny cups from your vacuum machine to uh, stimulate lymphatic movement at the end of your treatment. You can put a low level light therapy pad on it. It's, it's not going to hurt it. Those pads, just one of the, one of the big pads will fit right on top of the 2D, just perfect. So um, don't be, don't be worried about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to another thing that uh, I wanted to uh, address yeah so so cavitation contraindications I was just reading in the comments yeah so it, it should be common sense for any person in the world to know even if you weren't told this in training Guys, this line of work requires um, a. This line of work requires common sense. Because um, you should know 
any way that um, even if you weren't told in training that um, you know you you should not work over the spine hopefully you were taught how cavitation works so you know that um, if you take a cavitation head and you place it into a cup of water it will create after you have it in the cup of water for just a little bit this is the effect that cavitation has on liquid not solids but liquids cavitation over a period of time you'll start to see a tiny little swirl in the water and a lot of bubbles moving up towards the cavitation head this is this is how a diffuse reaction starts and so what that means is pressure is starting to build in the liquid source for that reason only and you should have been taught how cavitation how cavitation works if you weren't taught that it's also something that is that is available just by um, there's so much research to be found online without having to pay anybody so um, we should all kind of have a good idea of how cavitation works for that reason um, our spine contains a, a, a lot of spinal fluid and your spinal fluid is is it has a, a certain pressure naturally and when you when you increase um, the pressure within the area that cavitation might could possibly do within the spinal fluid there's nothing published on it but just common sense would tell you not to do that um, there's not fat over the spine, so why would anybody even be cavitating it? I, I, I don't understand that. There's no fat over the spine. Like, why would it even be a question? I mean, you don't cavitate over it. Um, so, so no, we, we don't need to cavitate over the spine. Um, I, I had seen an, another member had a had a question about um, hold on just a second here hold on I'm going through the comments okay yeah and so hey guys too one thing that I want to reference really quick is that whenever we are reading these medical studies on cavitation understand this is something where you've you've got to be you've got to be really careful understand that cavitation is used in the medical field at different frequencies like in one frequency is not equal to another one so cavitation is used in sports injury repairs also but that doesn't mean that you can use 40k or 30k cavitation um, to treat a sports injury just because they do it these these strengths mean something so make sure when you're referencing these studies that you're definitely looking for that 30 to 40K range because you will find a lot of medical studies on cavitation um, and they, they relate to sports injuries and different conditions because this has been used in the medical field for years. So sometimes you can be reading something it has absolutely nothing to do with uh, the machines that we operate. So, you know, don't get bored and, you know, decide to tell one of your friends that you might be able to treat their condition medically with your cavitation machine um, because we're not using strengths that are appropriate for therapeutic purposes just so you know I wanted to reference that real quick um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was we had somebody comment about one thing I want another thing I want to talk about real quick so fat cells in the body understand that no part of what we do moves a fat cell from one part of the body to the other I don't care who told you that um, if you ever relay that onto a client that has just a very please never relay that on to somebody in the medical field because they're they're going to immediately I'm totally not even saying this to hurt anybody's feelings either this is the truth you know, I'm gonna speak the truth if you say that to an educated client they're gonna think that you're a moron if you tell them that we can't do that why would women pay thousands of dollars 
for a uh, fat transfer if we could just transfer it with a hundred and fifty dollar vacuum therapy machine in 30 minutes it's, it's not possible to move a fat cell from one place to the other in the body so what happens what is it that causes that visual change whenever we're operating the vacuum or the swiss cuts this is what happens this is why you see that plumping effect we're not transferring fat and it's temporary we're not transferring fat. Please don't ever say that in your business. Um, what we're doing is there's such a thing as intracellular fluid, which is the contents that are inside the fat cell. And then we also have extracellular fluid that's within our tissue all of the, all the time. It, it, it's constantly free flowing um, in the tissue. And actually when we open a fat cell, you know the, the intracellular fluid that then spills out, it becomes extracellular fluid. Well, when you're operating the vacuum, what you're doing is you can take a whole lot of that fluid when you're operating that vacuum or that Swiss cup really fast, and you can push that fluid and direct it to one cer certain area on the body. So by doing that, you can create an illusion of a plumper area in that place because you have moved fluid to that place. It's only going to stay that way. For about 24 hours because the lymphatic system is going to sweep it out it, it's not going to stay locally in that area just temporarily um that is going to bring me to the subject of uh, butt lifts because this is something that um that i wanted to uh talk talk to some people out and some of you guys know this some of y'all have been here rocking in the groove like for a long time and this is something that you should be taught in training so we need to take more responsibility as trainers to give true we need to be telling our students how these treatments actually work um wh why would vacuum cupping be used for the butt okay so vacuum cupping is used, what it boils down to is blood flow restriction. The reason why we are doing blood flow restriction in these areas is because there are two things that make the muscle grow. Two things only. Um, that is protein and blood flow. When you exercise to build the muscle, the only reason why that muscle builds is because your heart rate increases and you're moving more blood to that muscle. And when it receives all of that protein and oxygen rich blood flow you know that muscle tissue will expand it helps the, the muscle to grow and that's why bodybuilders and weightlifters and stuff like that a lot of them practice um, you know they will isolate blood flow to certain areas to muscles that they want to build that's the reason why so when you see these treatments that show um, immediately after that's bullshit if you want to see a true butt lift result, you need to see that butt about three days later after that swelling goes down. It would be like me advertising, like, I can plump your lips. Like, I, I can plump your lips. Come in here in my shop and let me stick this sucker to your face um, and put this suction on your face for about 30 to 40 minutes. And when you, when you come off the table, yeah, you're, <laughs> it's gonna be huge. How long do you think that's going to last? It's the same thing on your butt. This is a, there's, there's, you, you only retain about 20, 20 to 30% of that. Butt lift treatment is, is a multiple process. And yes, you can build that muscle over time. And yes, over time you, you can lift the butt some because the muscle is reacting to the, the blood flow. It's going to take you probably six to nine to 12 maybe 15 treatments um, for longevity depending on the client that you're working with. Not all clients are candidates for butt lifts. If they have a squishy butt, if they have a butt that you can slap and it looks like you could ride the wave in, um, they likely have too much skin on their butt. They're not gonna be a good candidate for it. You've got to be able to squeeze their butt. It, it needs to have some hunk to it. You've gotta have something to work with. It's one thing that we've gotta understand in this industry You've got to know when you can't help somebody. We can't do everything. If you have somebody that has loads and loads of hanging skin, guys, collagen can only do so much. We're not going to be able to completely fix that for them. Um, we can help a lot of people, but 
we've got to be knowledgeable enough in our business to know what we can and can't do, the limits of our of our treatments. Um, and you know, really excessive, loose, loose skin issues, guys, we're not gonna be able to treat that. We need to be looking at clients that have like, like the, the crepey, like the, the little, like you see the little wrinkles here on the skin? Look, this is our area right here. This, look, we can help this. We can help some little loose skin here. We can, we can help some little, you know, crepey little turkey neck right here, but we're, we're not gonna be able, if, if our client has a full mother's apron, which is what a lot of people call um, a fupa, but you know, it's actually the, the lower tummy, it's actually an apron. If, if they have an apron, uh, a belly that's hanging over and covering their tootie, and we remove a lot of fat from that area, if the skin's very loose, guys, collagen can only do so much. Um, so we, we've got to know the, the limits of our treatment. Um, let me see here. Okay, uh, let's talk about, um, okay, somebody posted about, can everybody still hear me? I know a couple of people have commented that um, I'm cutting out, but then uh, several of people are saying, no, it's, it's fine, so I'm not sure if it's on my end, and I hate to end the live um, if it's not on my end. So for those that can hear me without issue and the video is not cutting out, y'all comment. Okay, so I have a couple people here that are saying they can hear and see me just fine. Okay, all right. Um, so low level, low level light therapy devices. I own a few. Um, the uh, originally in the in the beginning, there were so many distributors that were selling the the big laser mats and the and the laser belts and and the little laser things that wrap around the arms and the chin and this and that. And I, I jumped on board and I bought a bunch of them and I've used them and tested them in my studio um, against the traditional low-level light therapy devices that I've always used, which are my 160 MW pads. Um, that's typically what I what I used. That's what I base my results off of because they do give me results alone. Um, if I'm going to be just completely honest and transparent, uh, I don't feel like there's not something completely right uh, about these matte devices. Uh, and these, these light up devices that are coming from Alibaba and private distributors, for one, they get entirely too hot to be true um, low level light therapy. There's actual several instances of them burning and, and scarring clients. So in my personal opinion, if you need a way to heat up, if you're just using for heat purposes only, if you need to heat an area, like let's say you put some slimming cream on, you've got them wrapped up, you want to heat that area without having to get them in the, you know, the sauna blanket or whatever. Uh, if you want to use that, that's fine. Um, I don't use them for fat reduction. I don't believe that the the specs are up to par. I think there's a little bit of dishonesty uh, on exactly what wavelength and strength those diodes are for and what they're normally used for because wavelengths, uh, depth, and depth and strength matters because there's only, there's only certain wavelengths that target fat. Um, and then there's some wavelengths that, that target, uh, you know, specifically for pain and inflammation. So uh, when I got my new shape belt, which I, I, do, I do love, by the way, when you look at the new shape, you can definitely tell um, the difference between uh, the new shape and, you know, in these uh, other wraps. And I actually believe that these other devices may actually be like a knockoff of the original New Shape. So the New Shape has 300 um, light diodes. You can't wear it for more than, I think your max time is 20 minutes on that. But yes, it, it does produce results. And um, 
I put that in the same category as my 160 pads. Um, I did lots and lots of trials with the other light devices in my studio on clients who have actively been receiving treatment from me on and off for extended period of time. I'm really familiar with their body and how it responds to treatment and uh, the, the mats, all of that. Now, for somebody that may not have 160 pads or something like that and they've never used it, they may be tickled to death with getting, you know, a half inch or, you know, pulling some water weight off or something like that. But I want something that actually targets fat and my 160 pads alone can, can knock an inch off a client immediately um, without me even using any of the rest of my machine. And that's what I got spoiled to and that's what I want. So, no, I'm not impressed by the other uh, light devices. And just because I know that they will burn and hurt a client, um, I don't promote them for uh, liability reasons. I think it's poor design coming from a coming from a place that has virtually no regulations whatsoever. So there's no way of us knowing truly um, what the strengths are on that or anything because there's virtually no no inspection and no verification process on anything that comes out of the factories over there. Yes. Stick with the pads if you can. Um, Shanda, hold on just a second. Okay, a few people are having issues with the video. I'm just typing something in the comments. Okay, I just made a comment. Yes, Crystal, I see your comment. You're saying, so stick with the pads, question mark. Yes, absolutely. That is 100% uh, what I'm saying. If, if that's, my, that's my recommendation. That's what I was just saying. The, the belts, um, not the new shape. I, I, like, I like my new shape. The quality of it is great. When you look at the diodes and you compare, you can tell there's something very different um, about the belt. And or about the the new shape lipo wrap, um, and despite popular belief, there are a lot of devices. I know a lot of people say, well, everything is created and manufactured in China, and yeah, to an extent, some things, but not all things. I have a lot of things that come from uh, South Korea. Their regulations are very similar to the regulations that we have here in the United States. They are held a bit more accountable for what they represent on their products, and it, it does move through. Uh, a verification and inspection process as, as well as products that you can you know get from the UK or Germany I have some things from Italy so that's not our only option uh, as far as low-level light devices are concerned um, I recommend the uh, the pads you know the pad machines that I have because I know them to be safe and effective I can't speak for all these other machines that I haven't used. Um, just the devices that I have used. Um, let me see here. Do I buy on Amazon? Yes, I do buy on Amazon. Hey baby, the reason why I'm not the reason why I'm not stopping the live right now and restarting it is because there's 75 viewers on and 75 people that are on. There's only a small handful that are experiencing an issue. So if it were on my end, everybody would be experiencing an issue. Um, and we're we're actually streaming right now and don't don't have any issues. Um, let me check it on my phone too, where I can log in and see here. Hold on. Um, and this is going to be posted on the group. 
Um, hold on here. Let me check it. Okay. Hold on. Experience and an issue. So if it were on my end, everybody would be experiencing an issue. Um, and we're. Hold on. I'm just um, playing it back on my phone. I'm making sure there's no glitch on any of the video on my end on the phone. Okay, yeah, we've got a couple of people on here that have been through the, the whole video with no glitches, no sound issues or anything. Guys, if it was on my end, it would be doing that for everybody. Um, I hate to end the live whenever it, it's not uh, whenever it's not on um, my end. How many, somebody has a question, they want to know how many treatments for the for the FUPA, uh, that's not a, it's going to de depend on the client. I mean, you could have a client with one inch of fat or, you know, half an inch of fat on that area. You could have a another client with, you know, three inches of fat on that area, so it's going to range it. A good rule of thumb, when in doubt, tell your client that, you know, six sessions. Shoot them out with the number six. Tell them six, and we will reevaluate and see where you need to go from there, um, because all clients are different, so there's, there's not a magic number that works for every client. This is on a one-by-one one and case-by-case basis. So when in doubt, just tell them, you know, that they need to go with six sessions and you will reevaluate after that time. Guys, don't forget that these treatments that we do, no matter which one it is that we do, if, if you read about uh, how many treatments you need to have for it, it to be an overall effective treatment, you know, they recommend anywhere between eight and 12 sessions. So, uh, Really, we should be operating on packages only. We're not going to be able to fix anybody's problem in one session or two sessions or three sessions. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, one layer at a time. That's how we work the fat. Um, if these if these clients are coming in and thinking that we're fixing to change their whole life for a hundred dollars, I mean, like they they need to go to the they need to go to the trap house. Um, they can buy them something in a little bag, they can smoke their kneecaps off. We're not going to be able to do that for them. Um, it, it's not even logical to think. The, these clients are unreasonable. Um, we, this works a little at a time in, in packages. We, we can't fix these problems non-invasively for under $100 in less than an hour. That's, that's not body contouring, that's black magic. Um, these women are unreasonable and then you know what it does when these clients are unreasonable you know what it does look it makes it makes you feel bad about yourself I've, I've seen so many people posting pictures uh, and uh, with a visual change a visual change at one session they're like what did I do different what the hell you mean what can you do different what did you think you were fixing to do Please be happy. Stop throwing, stop throwing uh, salt on your own work. Like you, you can't, you can't do one session. Like you need to be so extremely happy and celebrating if you get a visual change at session one. Because I tell my clients not to even expect a visual change until session three. That I'm going to give them a measurement change each session, and I can guarantee a visual change by session three. You get a visual change at session one. That is to be celebrated. There are no pointers that need to be given. We can't tell you how to do. If you got a visual result at session one, there's nothing we can tell you to make it better than that. That's the best of the best, baby. You did great. Like, celebrate. You did wonderful. Absolutely, you understood the assignment. Um, so if you use the new shape, you wouldn't need to use the L no, you wouldn't need to use the LLLT pads at all. Hey guys, so the the new shape 
and the lipo pads are the the same thing just in a different packaging it, it's the same thing in a different packaging so you would use one or the other you wouldn't use them both back to back <clears throat> um, it's just that it's the same treatment in a different packaging oh let me see I'm going through y'all don't worry because this video is gonna is gonna flow through just fine um, whenever I post it back so just keep posting your comments and I'll read um, okay so somebody wants to know how do we create packages and price them okay so this is the thing first of all I would sell I would set up my packages to where you can get packages of three sessions and six sessions and those would be the two packages that I offer an affordable option for the three session and you know because you know by session three you can at least give them a visual change so money's not wasted um, but you need to structure your package pricing on a couple of different factors again this is not something that's one size that that fits all because all areas are different so you need to do some price comparisons in your area of what these services are averaging and then you need to look at your overhead costs like how much does it cost you to be in business and what is the minimal amount that you want to make per hour the least amount of money that I'm willing to make per hour in my studio is $85 so even if I run a sale you know I'm not ever 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 going to make less than $85 an hour usually the minimum is about 125 per hour so when I'm looking at my treatments like my packages are broke up like this you can get a tummy package you can get a leg package you can get a chin package you can get an arm package but my leg packages are going to cost more than my tummy packages because it takes more time so when I'm pricing my sessions I'll look at it like this and I'm like okay so I know that a tummy treatment is probably going to take me from the time I get the client in here, get everything all done, get them out, get everything cleaned up. I've probably used an hour and a half of my time. So I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, I need to base that off of like my minimum, you know, hourly rate and give a little bit, you know, of a, of a break, you know, on a package price but that is a good way to to start your packaging i do recommend breaking down your packaging um, by body part and this is the thing your clients don't know what they need you know what they need so when your clients are like picking i recommend when my clients come in basically my packages are structured to where um I can I can dance around my my treatment a little bit I have some movement room like if I have a client come in and I think that they need may need like a mini wood like incorporated into it there's there's enough leeway at this point on my pricing to where I can just kind of give them what I know that they need sometimes when they're picking services they don't they don't know what they need and not all clients need the same thing um, order I think I think that standard cookie cutter treatment and y'all know what I'm talking about because a lot of people are always asking when they see a result on a client they're like what was your treatment protocol how long did you do capitation how long did you do ARPIM and so they've got to you know they're they're writing this down but this is the thing that client is a completely she is her own little formulation so this is going to you need a blueprint to start but it's not good to get in the habit of that because you need to know and learn the ability that whenever a client comes in how do you assess what they need it's not it, it's it's not just in a book it is well for one you're gonna feel their fat you're gonna feel of them you're gonna touch them you're gonna look at what you're working with what areas do I need to eliminate how can I sculpt her what do I need to do here what's the best solution for this is she carrying a lot of fluid okay well I don't think all of that is fat I think some of that is fluid so the first thing that I'm gonna want to do is get really aggressive with you know removing some of this fluid so I can see what I'm working with as far as fat and every treatment is going to look a little different so when you have a client come in you know we're we're building a whole 
you know, if, if I have a client come in with one inch of body fat, her her treatment's going to look very different than a client that comes in, you know, with three inches of body fat. We're going to be talking two completely different phases of treatment. If I have a client come in with one inch of body fat, I'm probably going to be like, I may not, I may not use cavitation or RF on her at all. I may put her on the pads and then I may do a wood therapy session and end that with some ice or, I mean, you know, each client um, is different. So your, your treatment is not always going to be exactly the same. Hold on, I'm reading. Yes, I said, I said the trap house. Don't act like y'all have never seen anybody that smoked their kneecaps off. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, Okay, I have a, I have a question here that says, um, uh, Jasmine wants to know, she said, I see, she said, I see on other groups, I see on other groups that people that are doing body contouring and they're not moving in the, the heat it, the heat it, break it, drain it, and they're, they're getting good results. No, that's great. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, you know, I think everybody kind of started out with a different treatment protocol. However, me personally, my goal was to have the absolute best possible results and just based off of knowledge of how the, how the body works um, and how most of the lymphatic, how the lymphatic system operates with most women over the age of 30, which is who we're, we're dealing with. Um, for me, I'm gonna close my session uh, with vacuum every time. I'm always gonna close it with vacuum. We have way too many people in the industry that don't realize that radio frequency uh, does not just produce collagen, um, it reduces fat. So if we're going to kind of run through that, you know, the reason why the, the vacuum has one purpose unless you're treating cellulite and that is to stimulate lymphatic movement. We need to open the lymphatic system so that we can move the extracellular fluid in the tissue to the lymphatic system. So tell me something, if you do this treatment and you've done your, your vacuum treatment, you've cleaned up all your shit, everything you broke down, um, why are you gonna do RF, um, which is a thermogenic, and uh, break down fat and leave it there? Like, why even use the vacuum at all? Um, logically it's just for me something has to make sense for me i don't i don't care like for for me look if i get my mind set on something and that's what i've seen results from it has to make sense like logically for me scientifically i'm definitely not a person that's like well so and so told me this and she has a fancy website so and i paid a lot of money for that class so that's a big deal well I have to be able to relate that to ways that the body works. So when you burn fat naturally, what happens? Um, the body heats up, the heart rate accelerates, the body heats up, blood flow. Heat always comes first. No matter what process, uh, a fat reduction within the body. The body's natural fat reduction. Um, the heat always comes first and the last process is always the clean out. And it's also the order of wood therapy. No matter who you train with, there's an order of tools and believe it or not, it follows the heat it, break it, drain it method. Whether they call it that or not, that's the order that you use the tools. No matter what wood training class you take, if you go to Columbia, if you go here, if you go there, guess what? The order of tools, the way they have you using them, that's the heat it, break it, drain it protocol, whether you use it or not. They do not have you using your Swiss cups and your draining boards and then coming behind it again uh, with a cob roller. Um, so that is the reason why I use my treatment protocol. But yeah, 
No, whenever I started doing, when I first started doing body contouring, I was doing crazy ass shit. And I mean, I got results. Yeah, no, you can, you're going to get results by using any of the treatments, but I'm not looking to get average results. I'm looking to get the best results. So that's the reason why I use that method. But I'm not going to knock you. Like if you choose another method, I still want to be your friend. I still want to see your results. I'm not going to knock your shit. If another method works for you, use that. I'm going to use the method that over, you know, years of being in business or whatever has given me the best results and it makes the most sense for me because of the way that my, my brain works. I'm just hard-headed anyway. I'm not fixing to do what somebody else tells me to do. I'm going to create my own shit. So that's basically what I did. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. I'm going through questions, guys. Hold on. If you turn the frequency on the cavitation where it doesn't make noise, is the cavitation still effective? Well, all machines are different, so if you want to know, stick that little cavitation head in a clear glass bowl of water and see how it reacts to the water. If you can see a diffuse reaction in the water, then it's most likely effective on the fat. Okay, breast breast enlargement and enhancement. Okay. Um, this service is not for everybody. It's going to be uh, best for your small C cup uh, to A cup when we're talking about lift because you're working the pectoral muscle. The same way we're working the butt muscle, we're working the pectoral muscle. So um, if we have a client that has a whole lot of skin, you know, you can't lift skin. We can work muscle. Um, to move it up, but like, I wouldn't be a candidate for um, the cups. Where you will see your best results with uh, breast work is with your your smaller chested clients. Um, arm treatments. Hey guys, I'm going to tell you something. One of the, uh, I use a whole wide range of products at the shop, okay? So, and people will tell you this, anybody that's ever come to some of my trainings or or that's been to visit me because people that come and train with me in person like that's an experience so relationships are built so a lot of times people that come and train with me in person usually they'll end up coming back just to hang out and spend the day and shoot the shit because we we kind of become friends but um any of these people that have been to the studio will tell you that uh, i have a i have a whole range of shit I love potions, I like mixing up my own stuff, and any arm treatment that I'm doing, I'm always, always, always going to start my arm treatment with a thermogenic, and when I say thermogenic, I mean a hot cream. It's just a fancy word for hot. It's just a hot cream. Um, and I'm going to wrap the arms uh, for 30 minutes, and that's going to be the first step of my arm treatment, and then after that, you put the... Put the light on them and, you know, depending on the fat mass that you're working with, if you feel like the fatty area is too thin, you don't want to do cavitation because you're afraid it might make the hanging skin worse, then just hold the cavitation and use use the RF. But it, it's just like another body treatment. But I really feel like that the the arms really respond well to um, wrapping at the beginning of treatment. Yeah, so when we're talking about looking at the body for water versus fat, guys, this is one of the biggest things I've learned. Many, many times we mistake body fat for fluid, and so do our clients. Sometimes our clients will come in, our clients think they're fat. They're not fat, they're swollen. A lot of that is fluid. A lot of it is fluid. When you get to talking to them, you realize, well, for one, they're not pooping right. They're, they're not pooping right and they're constipated and they're dehydrated and they're and they're bloated and you know some of them have sluggish lymphatic systems you know they're they're sedentary they don't they don't move a lot they're not super active we need to handle them with care you cannot overstimulate the lymphatic system you need to stimulate before your treatment you need to stimulate after your treatment 
and you need to stimulate all through your treatment. And I had a client ask me, um, they asked me, not a client, I had a student ask me about if I was familiar with uh, the Brazilian lymphatic massages. Yes, I am. It's actually what I would call, I have like a, it's, it's the technique with the hands that whenever I was first getting my feet wet with learning how magical my hands were, your hands are magic too. All of our hands are magic if you use them right. Um, that was the style of touch um, and what I call fat manipulation and stimulation that I was most drawn to. So that is what I modeled my handwork after is uh, the Brazilian massage style. So I don't call it a massage. I don't offer massage services, but um, it just so happens that yes, that is the way that I touch people all through, all throughout treatment. Um, certain hand techniques, even that I teach my girls in training. I teach my girls that your hands are a tool as well as your machine. So if you ever watch um, a Brazilian massage, you will uh, a Brazilian lymphatic massage, you'll notice that it looks a lot different from a manual lymphatic drainage massage because guess what they do? Look, I'm going to come back to heat it, break it, drain it every time because guess what? The hand motions that they use that you will see all through Brazilian massage. You're gonna see them. You're gonna see them slapping the skin. I can't slap myself. You're gonna see them slapping the skin, and what's that for? That is for blood flow. That's the only reason why you do that. The only reason why you do it is to bring the blood to the surface, to heat the area. You're bringing the blood. But then what else? Guess what else you'll see them do? You see them do these issues not issues. I've got issues, y'all. I'm sorry. I was probably thinking about how many issues I got is why I said that. What I meant is you see them like pinching. They're pinching the fat. They're breaking. They're breaking the fat. And then guess what? They're using their hands like a contour board and they are draining the fat. Um, and in between all that, you do see some small pumping motions here and there and some stretching action on the skin. But overall, it looks very different from a manual lymphatic drainage massage, and that is because it is a massage that is not geared towards actually draining the entire lymphatic system. It is a massage that is geared toward manual body contouring with your hands. I mean, anybody that's ever trained with me, you know how I feel about that. Um, I will go as far as saying that if you don't have the power of touch, this is not the business for you. Because when you are doing cavitation and you open that fat cell, if you are not manipulating that fat while you're working your cavitation head, guess what? So you have a balloon and you've popped holes in it. So you've got a little bit of fluid that's just trickling out. But this is where technique comes into play. You've got this balloon and a little bit's trickling out. Well, what happens if you put a little pressure on that balloon? You're gonna move some of that fluid out of that cell faster. And that is literally how, how you need to think about it. Hand work is everything. So yes, I am a fan of Brazilian uh, massage technique. I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, the touch makes sense to me. The whole, the whole overall massage makes sense to me. Every movement of the hands, when I see it, I understand it. I know the reason for every movement. If a client has a copper IUD, what treatment would you use on her? She has a lot of hanging skin. Yes, so therapy. I had one client ask a question. They wanted to know what is the difference between a yeso wrap and plaster wrap? Um, well, one is English and, and one is Spanish. Um, exact same thing, two different languages. It's like 
it's kind of like asking what's the difference between um, what's the difference between Madero and Wood? They're both Wood, just two different languages. Yes, that was Spanish for cast. Thoughts on fibroblast? I know it's not suitable for all fits. Patrick, it was highly effective for stretch marks, wrinkles, loose skin. Uh, yeah, so fibroblast, if it's something that you're trained on, um, I, I would never recommend anybody doing a fibroblast treatment without being um, trained on it. And I definitely wouldn't uh, recommend doing the, the treatment with a mole remover. Um, but if you have a, a true plasma pin, um, and go through the training on uh, fibroblast. It's one of the most uh, effective skin tightening treatments uh, I've seen and it, it would work beautifully in combination with what we do. Yes, I am uh, Yes, I am certified in it, was certified in it. Um, I did offer it whenever I did permanent makeup and all of, all of those services uh, I'm, I'm not doing any longer because I, I went just full on uh, body contouring and I use virtual mess a lot. The healing process for me um, on fibroblast is probably the biggest pain in the butt because clients can just really freak out. So that that's probably the biggest thing for me. I don't love a lot of high maintenance aftercare and, and that, that can be, you can be dealing with some high maintenance clients and they start freaking out whenever that shit you know, turns really red like the next day and then whenever it starts peeling and the skin's not fully healed and they're like, oh my God, is the skin going to go back to the right color? And they're all freaked out. You have to nurse them through it. I don't like having to deal with all that. Um, okay, I have a client coming in that lost a lot of weight really fast and has saggy extra inner thigh skin what protocol would you recommend I would recommend a protocol of low-level light therapy for 30 to 40 minutes um, well I would probably wrap her first coming in with a, a firming something firming but then I would put her on the pads and likely use RF only with no cavitation and I would likely end that with a virtual meso session where I included uh, sodium pyruvate and organic silica. Okay, Jasmine said, unfortunately for me, no other way worked until I tried your method. I invested so much in my first training I did with some girls months ago and almost gave up. Didn't get any information or understanding of anything or support after. I had to do a lot of research on my own and then I found you on YouTube. Long story short, I'm so grateful for you. May God continue to bless you, Jasmine. That's so sweet. I hope it did work. I hope it did work. Just know if I if I give a treatment method, just know that I've used it. Just know that I've used it and it's been effective. And um and also to know that, um, you know, I contour full time. It, it's not a it's not a side gig for me, guys. It's a it's a full time job. It's how I feed my family. Um, it's how I fed my family. You know, long before any of these little training classes and stuff. Um, it, it's how I supported my family. So it has to be effective. Understand that. Um, anything anything I've ever done had to be effective. If you want to stay in business in a small town um, and be able to support an entire family on your own, um, you better be doing some good shit. So just know that I have obsessed over my treatments. So uh, if I hand down, I'd never hand somebody a protocol that I hadn't seen be effective. And I'm going to tell you something else too. My girls that came and trained with me hands on, a lot of these girls, some of them had done wood before. Some of them had done wood before and they had been through wood training and they were not feeling sure of themselves. But you know what, this is one thing that I will say. When they got their girls off the table, every single one of my girls produced a visual result on their models. They all worked, they all got an immediate result. It was an effective treatment. They were told how to do it properly and it was very, relaxing and I watched all 
of these, I watched all of these girls work. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you that sometimes it can be something so simple that's, that's throwing your treatment off. Um, so just know, if, if I drop some advice ever on a, it's, it's not, it's not something that I just pulled out of my ass. And you know what, sometimes I had a, we had a, uh, another contouring artist in here. It was uh, Anisha, I think she had posted. So she's seeing somebody right now that's got a lower belly pouch. Guys, sometimes those little tiny lower belly pouches can literally give you the blues. They can be the hardest to work on. I've had more trouble trying to pull an inch of fat off somebody than I have, you know, a great big person that I could give great results. But it's like when you get down to that little, little, oh, it can be so frustrating because you're like, damn, I should be able to eliminate this in two or three sessions and it's just not wanting to move. Um, and sometimes those smaller fatty areas can just be more complicated um, to get rid of. One thing that I wanted to uh, talk about was uh, scar tissue. I'm reading down through. If a, if a patient has bilateral knee replacement, can you use cavitation or RF? Yeah, so if somebody has had a, a knee replacement on their knees, you can you can work the tummy. That's okay. You just don't need to work anywhere on the legs. Is mesotherapy non-invasive or do I need some type of license to do it in Texas? Well, this is the thing. Mesotherapy is a big word because mesotherapy covers a whole umbrella. It's like a whole umbrella word for several different treatments. So mesotherapy can be traditional needle um, injections, it can be micro needling, like it can be like derma rolling, it can be virtual mesotherapy, and then virtual mesotherapy has three different types of virtual mesotherapy. You've got sonoporation and ionotrophoresis, and then you've got electroporation, and then people get confused because they think that something that's microcurrent powered might be electroporation. And it's not. Electroporation is electroporation, and microcurrent actually has a little bit of a bite to it. You can feel it on the skin, and that actually falls under the category of, uh, I feel so stupid trying to say the word. It's ontophoresis. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but I said it just like how it's spelled. So that's microcurrent powered. It's not the same as electroporation. Um, electroporation can open a cell and close it. No other form of mesotherapy can do that. That's why I teach on specifically electroporation. It's also why it's such an effective treatment has the highest retention rate. When you're understanding mesotherapy um, and you really get your mind around the idea of the differences between intracellular and extracellular, understand anytime you do mesotherapy, okay, let's say you do a traditional needle injection that needle injection that needle injection goes into the extracellular fluid okay it doesn't go directly into the cell it goes into the extracellular fluid around the cells so basically it works from the outside in okay well the lymphatic system will sweep up some of that and take it out so the retention rate is not great okay all the things that fall under that category are all forms of mesotherapy hyaluron pin traditional needle injection derma rolling micro channeling all these things, it deposits the serums into the extracellular fluid. That's why the retention rates are not great. So you put in, you know, the body's going to retain, you know, 40 to 50 percent of what you put in. The lymphatic system's going to take the rest of that shit out. Um, so electroporation does not work from the outside in. It works from the inside out. So when you are using meso serums and you are putting them, what you're doing is when you're using this device, boom, it's opening that cell. It's making it permeable. Products are going inside the cell. Guess what? When you remove the device, boom, it's locked in there. You know what that means? Higher retention rate, a more effective treatment from the serum. The lymphatic system cannot move that out. It's locked in the cell until it works. So... That is why, but a lot of people, they'll get to looking for electroporation devices, and you got to watch these tricky-ass people, because you know what? 
they will smooth label something an electroporation device and you go and look at the specs and you will see that it's microcurrent powered. Well, microcurrent does not make, it, it does not act in the same way as electroporation. So they just tried to sell you on some shit that's a lie. It's not even the device that you're looking for. It's not going to be the same type of effect. It also doesn't go as deep. So it's another thing. you got to look at specs. So is... Meso it depends on the form of mesotherapy that you're doing. You can't do traditional needle injections unless you're a nurse. You can't do micro needling unless you're an esthetician. You can do micro channeling if you have nothing anywhere on the body because of the depth. It's, it's tricky and needle depths matter. Hyaluron pen is, is currently not regulated. Um, in Texas, virtual mesotherapy, uh, no, it is not, is not um, regulated. Um, and believe it or not, no form of mesotherapy is FDA approved, not even the traditional needle injections. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, so Taylor had commented, she she still cannot like really see the live. Somebody comment and let her know that it's gonna be fine because whenever I post this back, she's she's gonna be able she's gonna be able to see it. Um also another thing I want to talk to y'all about, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me check my messages real quick to make sure that my husband doesn't need me. Okay. All right, so let me tell you something. For those of you who are wanting to start a business, you're wanting to start a contouring business, and the uh, the equipment cost is overwhelming for you, um, let me tell you, so you can start a contouring business without a machine. You sure can. You can start a contouring business with nothing but wood and ice. Absolutely. So, manual contouring, you can start your business with that. Wherever you've got to start, the cheapest route to start. Because guess what? So do you a couple wooden ice sessions and save, save your money to get you a machine. you got to start somewhere. But don't drag your feet about starting. Um, that's a bad habit to get into. Best thing I ever started doing in my life. Best thing I ever started doing in my life is just doing it. That, that's like my, that's my, I get an idea, if I get an idea, I do it. Swear to God, y'all, whenever I got ready to write my, let me tell y'all a story about whenever I got ready to write my book. I shit you not. I was sitting in here in my recliner one night, and Brad was in his wheelchair, um, and we were watching TV. I had never thought, ever, about writing a book in my life. Never. And it was like this little voice in my head said, write a book. It's like I heard this little voice in my head said, write a book. And so I looked at Brad, my husband, and I said, you know, Brad, I think I'm going to write a book. And he kind of gave me a head nod, like, really? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to start it right now. And literally, I got my laptop like in my lap. And that's where it started. 30 minutes after the thought, I was starting chapter one. get started so when are you coming to South Florida I want to train in person oh I want to get to Florida as quick as I can I need the ocean in my life I love Florida Tina says a girl in my area does the training for 2300 comes with bed and equipment well, you know, I mean, sometimes, I mean, you got to look at your equipment and see how much your equipment's going to cost. Also, um, I want to tell y'all something. So, when we're looking at trainers, this is, like, I'm going to talk to you, like, as if, I'm going to talk to you, like, as if you're my friend and as if I don't do any training at all. When you're getting ready to look for a trainer, look, some people are marketing geniuses, Okay. 
just tell y'all something else too. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. And my kids aren't here, so y'all won't be judging me for smoking my cigarette on live. Because I got a cup of coffee here, and the nicotine is calling my name. But, uh, no, when you're getting ready to pick a trainer, okay? So I, I just want to, I just want to tell you something. Um, you need, you need to do a lot of looking. And, um, for number one, you need to be able to see their result photos from their own clients. Verifiable result photos. Like, is this a verifiable business that has been in business solely operating, like, doing this for a living? Um, also, what do their student results look like? It's not just about their results, it's about the student results. Hey guys, hold on just a second. Hold on guys, I've got to move this receiver. It's too far from Okay, so what I was saying is that whenever you're looking for a trainer, you need to, for one, you need to look and just make sure, you know, that, that they have been in active business. That Make sure that their only business is not training. That's scary. If the only thing that they've ever done is train, and that's what their whole business is, is based on, like, where, where are their, where is their work that they've done? where they've actually utilized what they're teaching and, and know it to be effective. Um, is their knowledge effective enough that they're able to operate a business outside of training? Um, student results um, are important. Um, you know, the content of their training, do, do your research, you know, does it make logical sense? All these things matter. And this is what I would tell somebody that was looking for someone. This is something that I would look for. So wherever you go, whoever it is, you know, that you're dealing with, just make sure that you're looking out for those things so that you're not sad later, um, you know, because you, you feel like you end up finding out later, you know, that you learned some crazy shit or whatever, and it wasn't accurate. So um, that's just stuff to look into. Um, we've got some people commenting about, I have a client with firm type back rolls. They don't seem to respond to RF, sauna, body wraps, YSO at all. Should I just try wood for a few treatments? Absolutely. Wood is my favorite for back rolls. If I see a client with back rolls, that's the only thing that I'm going to treat them with is wood. It in, in my personal opinion, um, back rolls, but this is the thing, I'm going to work them laying on their side with their arms up like this so that I have access to this whole side area as well as the back on the back rolls. Work them from their side. It's a big, broad range open area that, that you can work. Uh, 
Okay, when combining wood therapy with cavitation and RF treatment, do you recommend wood first or after or in between cavity and RF? No, wood therapy is a lymphatic treatment. Uh, wood, wood therapy needs to be at the close of your session. It's lymphatic. So it, it needs to be at the close of your session if you're using it as an actual um, like contouring add-on. Like if you actually want to sculpt with it, if you are using it all throughout your treatment, it's not going to be the same visually as if you end with it. True or false, when treating cellulite, does it get worse before it gets better when doing treatment? Sometimes, not with all clients, but with some, yeah. Yeah, and you know, cavitation can get ugly too. Um, it can make the body fat area ugly before it starts to look better. Do I have an issue with ultrasound gel being sticky and that it dries too quick? Do you use it for cavitation and RF? Um, no, Donna. I don't use ultra. Well, I don't use ultrasound gel at all. Um, the reason why I don't use ultrasound gel is because at this point now I know that anything that's on the surface of the skin is actually pushed. Um, to a certain degree into the skin when you're using cavitation and there's a lot of chemicals in ultrasound gel that I don't think need to be pushed into um, deep into the skin so I use aloe vera I use a, a natural aloe vera but I don't use uh, aloe for my radio frequency um, there is a there is a whole write-up in the group on conductors so uh, if you will search the group for conductors you will find one of my posts it's very long and in-depth and it gives a full explanation as to why different conductors matter um, because different energy sources travel through uh, different routes um, different energy sources are conducted differently so you can search conductors and, and read up on that oh let me see let me see here but fillers and electroporation train. Look, I'm just talking to y'all about butt fillers right now. Let me tell you something. And I hope, gosh, I hope I've got a nurse on here on the live that is familiar with Sculptra. Because if we do, she's going to back me up on this. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you guys something. Butt fillers. When we see people going to get butt fillers, Holy Spirit activate. Somebody said that. Yep, I'm fixing my cigarette for this one. This is be a long discussion. So hold on. So when we are doing butt fillers, like if not when we're doing butt fillers, I don't do butt fillers. But let's say that you go and you get uh, butt fillers done with sculpture. What is sculpture? It's an injection in the butt. It's hyaluronic acid. That's what it is. It's hyaluronic acid injections into the butt. Okay, so first thing that I want you guys to do is research how much hyaluronic acid does it take for a, a butt filler treatment. It takes anywhere from 500 mil to 800 mil, okay? Do you know how much hyaluronic acid that is? Holy freaking moly, do you know how much that is? Do you know how much we pay for hyaluronic acid for one mil? One mil. Oh no. The cheapest you can get it. Like $45 a mil. You're talking about $45 times 500. Look, and if you try to do like 10 mil or something like that, like on the filler, on the butt, like, y'all, the body's going to absorb half of it. It's, it's going to, your, your client's going to be mad in the long run. It's not going to be longevity. When you're adding up your supplies, it's going to cost you so much money. You're going to have to charge them a lot of money. And then it's not going to last very long. Then you're going to be pissed. And over a long period of time, it's going to end up making your, your reputation not that great. We can't do everything. We can't do everything. I don't even know who said that. Somebody one day was just like, you know what, we got this thing here, we can shoot stuff into the skin, it seems like a good idea, but they, they never researched anything about how much does it take for longevity, and there's so many things we can do for the butt. But if you want to do a true like butt filler experience, like what you see with Sculpture, guys, we cannot afford to buy that much hyaluronic acid. They can go get Sculpture injections for 
it would cost more for us to be able to get it than it, it does for them to go get it done with sculpture if you did the appropriate amount. And anything worth doing is worth doing right. So don't you never half-ass it. If you know that you cannot give them the appropriate amount that they need for longevity, well, don't do it. Because anything worth doing is worth doing right. So, what can we do for butts? Uh, technique based butt treatments perfect combo for a butt treatment is wood virtual meso with glutox and meso muscle and cupping those are that is the, the dynamic trio right there let me tell you it's not always about making the butt bigger this is one thing that we gotta learn sometimes the shape of the butt looks funny because they got a spare tire we need to snatch that out. Sometimes their butt looks saggy because they got fat under their butt cheeks. We need to sculpt that out. We need to shape the areas around the butt. That's what we need to focus on with our wood and with our machines, if that's what you choose to do. Focus on the areas around the butt. First, you have to visualize it. You have to look at the butt from the back, always from the back. You have to look at it from the back. You have to be like, okay. So their butt would look completely different if their waist were nice and slim right here and they didn't have this roll of fat. Let's see, I just sculpt that right out. It's like literally you're, you're going to mold their body. That's what you're visualizing. Okay, I'm going to sculpt that out. So, all right, we got some banana rolls here in the butt. All right, I've got to work on that. We need to get that out of the way. You know, chisel the bottom of these butt cheeks here with, you know, either my cavitation or my wood therapy, you know, and then, you know, we got, we got a little bit of hip dips right here. I shape that out some. That's what you're going to use that Glutox and that Meso Muscle for. And, you know, we need to grow this muscle because these little muscles aren't, that's what we're going to use the vacuum therapy for. And you're going to put all this stuff together and it's going to be like magic. But it's not going to be magic in one session. It's going to be magic over a combination of treatments. It is the best non-invasive result that you can get. And it is something that will make sense to your to your clients I'm just telling you the truth you're gonna get your feelings hurt if you try to if you try to do butt injections and you expect for that client to come back to see you the next time and still have some of the results mm -mm, her body's going to absorb it no 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 for one we've got to be able to, to put it at a, at a good depth and HA filler consistently cross link cross link filler that actually gives the plumping effect can't be pushed with electroporation anyway. You can use an HA serum with electroporation, but it's not going to give the same plumping effect as the crosslink hyaluronic acid. So there's many things wrong with that scenario. Hold on, I'm waiting. Did I talk about butt dimples? Frida, are you talking about, uh, you talking about cellulite, baby? Butt dimples, cellulite? We gotta, we gotta work that out with some, with some vacuum therapy. Yes, well, I saved the live, absolutely. It's gonna be, it's gonna be posted in the group. And I am looking at the comments. I am looking at the comments if anybody's got a question. We've still got 54 people on the live. So, we had like 70 something. We've got 50, 55 people on the live. So, if somebody has a, has a question, because I'm going to be wrapping it up here in just a second. I'll have to get off here. I'm trying to fit so much in that I can, I can talk about. There was something that I wanted to talk about that I think that I'm missing. Okay, the hip dips. I wanted to address that. I wanted to address the hip dips because there was a picture that was posted. And I wanted to say, for one baby, you're going to have to work on that. Oh, the one that posted the picture of the saddlebags. I will come back to this in the video and I will post. It was, it was hip dips with her. And the hip dips were bad. But the saddlebags below it were making the hip dips even worse. So I was going to tell her like the combination treatment that she needs to use based off and baby I'm going to tag you on here and you'll get to this point and you'll know I'm talking to you the way those little hip dips come in so you need to work those saddlebags 
isolate that area and work those saddlebags only with your cavitation to bring that down like and with your laser lipo too and that needs to be your first step but then you need to hit that waist you need to hit that waist and these are all these are all things that are going to contribute to taking away from the illusion of those hip dips but then you also need to use the glutox and the meso muscle like when you're dealing with somebody that has hip dips like that and this is something they've had their whole life and they're wanting to correct it non-invasively you're going to have to use a combination of methods to be able to work that out and you do have to use your imagination because you have to look at how you can work areas around that to take away from the issue and that's part of our job is to look at the body and think about areas that we can sculpt and change the shape of to complement other areas of the body Um, let me see here. Trying to determine if my machine is faulty. I have the blue and white machine. Should my RF treatment be getting warm? Yes, it should. Um, you need to, well, for one, uh, I'm not sure what type of conductor you're using, um, but you need to test it using a glycerin as your conductor and you need to hit it with a, uh, you need to do RF for about five minutes and then uh, hit it with the, with the temperature, with the temperature gun or infrared thermometer to see what that skin temperature is at. It should be reading uh, somewhere between like 104 to 106 in that time frame. So, Crystal, so baby, you're wondering how to price a technique-based butt treatment. Go to my website. Go to all of my butt treatments. When you go and you look at my butt treatment pricing, I don't give my client the option. If they come for a butt lift, they're getting the cups, the wood, and the virtual meso. That is my butt treatment. So, you can go look at that. You can go look at that pricing. I, I want to say it, it may be... I want to say it's something like three butt sessions for 550, something like that. But that's that's three treatment methods, and and one I'd rather charge them 550 to be able to give them something good than to you know charge them for doing nothing but just putting them on the cups and you know nothing else but shaping that area. There's only so much you can do with just the cups alone. You have a, do I have a training on Glutox and Meso Muscle? Yes, I do. It is the, the protocol is included in my uh, virtual Meso training course uh, on learnbodycontouring.com. It's a pre-recorded course. I have a client that we are working on our chin doing liquid lipo wrap for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, LLT. 20, 20 minutes, right back in five minutes, champion powder. Okay, yeah, so Amy, I don't, shit, I don't want to talk about uh, liquid lipo, damn it, I don't want to give liquid lipo treatment advice, but I can tell you that yes, liquid lipo has a product that you should be using for that, but it's not the product that you're using. You need a thermogenic for that, Amy. Where it's being wrapped, you need a thermo, you need a thermogenic for that. And if a uh, Kiki or or Jay or anybody was on or Jen or anybody was on here right now, then Amy, I I don't know if you're signed up with Liquid Lipo. Um, it looks like. See, we only have one mutual friend. You may not be signed on with a. Uh, with Liquid Lipo, but yeah, there is there is another product that you need to be using for that. That's um, and it's it's not liquid lipo. It's it's another product that they offer. And I'm trying to see. Okay, all right, guys. So I've been on here for a little bit longer than what I planned. It always goes so fast. Um, I'm going to post the live.
in the group. May not have answered a lot of questions, but I answered some. Maybe somebody will be able to um, come back and reference this and it'll be helpful in some way. I'm going to post it in the group. I'm going to hashtag it training so that anybody that wants to search for any of the lives, any of the videos, all you've got to do is go into the search box on the group and hashtag training. I'm fixing to I'm fixing to get off here because I need to make my husband something to eat and he's being so nice, not giving me a hard time in there right now and he really doesn't feel good. But um, I need to make him something to eat before bed and um, I will post this in the group for y'all, okay? So, and then uh, if there's anything that we didn't cover, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be back on, I'll be back on live. We can cover some other stuff. Damn it, I've been on here for an hour and a half. It, it doesn't seem like that long. So, uh, I'm going to end the video though. Y'all have a, y'all have a good night. And, um, I'm going to post this in the group, okay guys?